Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back. This is part two of the CY 81 inch P47 build and review. Uh, this plane came to us from Texas RPC planes down, well obviously Texas. Uh, we'll be covering the wing today, the control surfaces and the tail feathers, um, all the features, the quality, what I've seen, what I liked, what I didn't like. Um, as well as some of the modifications that I've already done and some of the modifications that I am going to do. Now, this is a typical, this isn't your typical unboxing. This is an unorthodox uh, unboxing as I have already started to work on various parts of the, the ARF or the uh, airplane itself. Um, I, I tend to find a little bit of time here and there and depending on how much time I have di dictates what uh, what I'll be working on so anyhow I'll be going over some of that so again this isn't your your uh, your standard unboxing there's no box here um, but again the plane is still in pieces and I hope that somebody out there can get some useful information from what I will show you guys so anyway stay tuned and we'll get right to it So first and foremost, the wing. The wing is built really well. Um, I do apologize. There is some resin there um, from a one of the modifications that I am making or doing. I should say. I will. Uh, I'll cover it, and, and you'll understand why there's some resin there. Um, but overall, the wing, the wing and the tail surfaces. I was truly amazed by the quality um, the, the wing and the tail surfaces um, the control surfaces at that are are a sheeted ply so it's a hardwood ply which is awesome it, it they, the craftsmanship that they used um, on, on these parts is impeccable I was 100% astounded um, I think I mentioned it in the other video. Either they had machines dialed in pumping these things out, or there was just some badass OG builders out there slinging these parts because there was very minimal work that I needed to do to get these things ready for glass. I mean, I, I've had one other guy online um, vouch for that comment. Now, this 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 side here, <clears throat> excuse me, this side here of the aileron has already been glassed. Uh, and sanded so it's ready to go this side has not um, but anyways we'll go over that go over that some more here uh, the wing I think you guys can see that quite well so the flap area is recessed and it has a thin piece of plywood that overextends and it really helps to close up that gap um, a, a, a lot better than what I've seen in other P47 ARFs. The aileron section also is recessed and has thin sheet plywood that extends out past the mounting point and it's going to give a really good hinge point seam that's just clean and looks 100% just awesome. I'm really happy about that. Uh, again, the quality the quality for an ARF is um, it, it, it's leaving me without words. Um, so this was a blem kit, a blemish kit, uh, or ARF I should say. The fuse had a little bit of damage on it. The wings were mismatched. The fuse is a uh, snafu theme, and this I don't know what silver livery they had going on um, as an option. So. Um, the coating, which is like an ultra coat type um, type covering, is actually laid down really well. The seams where they have to fold over, where it meets weird weird uh, corners and whatnot, um, the details have just been given the utmost attention. And these guys or, or gals, whoever put these together, did a really good job with laying down this covering. But I will say. That while I was working on the control surfaces, getting them ready for glass, with just a little bit of heat, that covering came up no problem. 
um, which was, in my case, that was great. I 100% uh, appreciated that. There was no sticky residue left behind, very little sanding afterwards. Um, but I can only imagine, especially here in Central California, with a 100 degree summer day, that that, that coating might not fare well. So, anyhow, but back to the wing. Again, built really good, really strong. And you can see bottom side here. And I've, I haven't modified this one. I haven't modified this one just yet. Um, but I do plan on doing modifications. Reason being is that my buddy Steve also got the same exact plane, except brand new, um, in the ARF kit. And when I asked him about it, before I had mine, I, mine was a few days after his, or maybe even a week or so, it doesn't matter. This opening here accepts a three and a half inch wheel. Now, this is an 81 inch wingspan warbird. Three and a half inches is just gonna look way too small. Um, because of another kit that I had, or I'm sorry, I keep saying kit, I don't know why I keep saying kit, but because of another project that I had, I started accumulating and buying every single part that I would need. Um, the other project was a Hangar 9 P47 150 class, which was the um, the older quote unquote 30 cc model. So I, I had uh, I had wheels and struts purchased for those. I had my retracts. I have all my servos, all that stuff. So I figured I'd just throw them into the CY. Why not? I got a hell of a deal from Chris down there at Texas RC Planes, and I, I couldn't refuse it. And so here we are. So some of the modifications. Um, the wheels that I do have are four and a half inch. They're obviously bigger than the three and a half inches. They're not quite as big. I, I probably should have went with five inch wheels, but these were hard enough to get. And these are the four and a half, so we're just gonna roll with those. No pun. Back when I bought these a few months ago, uh, rubber was at a shortage. I was told it was I, I was almost given up on trying to find wheels and probably turning some out of wood. Um, but Tomas down at Legends, Legend Hobby, um, Legend Warbirds, I think it is, also down in Texas, he ended up having a set. He also had a set of Sierra rims, put those two together, shot them off to me at a good deal again, um, and I couldn't be happier. And then these struts are Sierra scale struts. They're a little custom. They're... They were milled down to accept my retract or my retract accept them, however you want to look at that. And then if, uh, the, the length was uh, uh, also worked on to fit the previous project that I had, but they're going, to, they're going to work out for this just fine. So with that, all that being said, um, the opening, the opening for the retracts accepts a three and a half inch wheel comfortably and it does come with gear doors and there are your gear doors Let's see if i can get those in there and get you guys a better look so not bad they don't look bad at all it's a two-piece got your inner door and your outer door and it does come with the hardware to attach those um but they're flat they're a flat piece of wood they're they're plywood they're covered plywood and they're pretty robust and they're made well and they look good so if a guy or a gal wanted to you know just buy the ARF and build it as is yeah it would it would still look pretty darn good um, but me knowing they're flat and never being able to leave anything alone we're making new gear doors we're widening the wheel wells and we're putting bigger wheels on there and I'll probably go as far as boxing in the interior here and give it a more scale appearance um, but that all depends on how crazy that's going to drive me. Uh, so anyhow, we're going to widen this up and open this up a lot more. Um, the retracts that I chose to go with were the Electrons. Uh, Electron USA sells them. I believe these come out of Spain. Very, very quality unit. Just by, just by the looks and the information they have. Um, the gear drive here for the, for the Trunnion is like a flat thread i forgot what they called it but really popular with the jet guys 
Um, and again, I bought these for the other P47 project, but I have them and they're going to fit in here just fine with a little bit of modification. Um, if, if I didn't want to get to the point where it's scale-ish, I could drop them in and they'd be perfectly fine. Um, but I'm going to recess them a bit and do some, do some other stuff with them. But electron retracts, uh, they, they seem to be pretty, pretty well, pretty good unit. So anyhow, the other accessory that didn't come with the plane was the pylons. Now, I don't know if they come standard. I think my buddy Steve said that he did not receive any, so I do not think that they ship them out with pylons. Um, I've seen P47s, various fields, some with, some without. Some guys don't care for them. Some guys have to have them. I, I kind of have to have them. Am I going to strap any bombs to them? Probably not. But I do think that they look pretty darn cool on there. So um, for these here, what I did was I took some 3M spray adhesive. And I sprayed it down here on the covering and I glued my uh, sheet of 80 grit sandpaper and I spent about 20 minutes rubbing it back and forth until I found the contour of the wing that I liked and they'll be attached. But of course, after doing all that, um, I came across JP Warbirds. I actually didn't just come across him. I've been dealing with him for a while. Uh, this guy's out of the Czech Republic. You should check him out. He's JP Warbirds on Facebook. He makes accessories for uh, a handful of different planes, the P-47 being one of them. And the guy is just an artist with the castings that he does of the stuff. I mean, he's got cannons, antennas, um, pylons. Uh, he does a bunch of interior cockpits, finished, unfinished, however you want them. And he's actually pretty reasonable. And the other thing that's pretty, pretty amazing is coming out of the Czech Republic over to California... I typically get my shipments from him in under seven days. So that's pretty nuts. But anyhow, his pylons look a little bit different. These are actually from a top flight um, airplane, I, I, I believe it's from. Uh, I picked him up off of Dino over on Facebook. And he, he deals the top flight ARFs that are available right now. And as well as a bunch of other accessories for Meister, um, I believe. And then also the top flight kits. So there's that. Um, so we're going to get those other ones. They're a little bit longer. They actually reach the trailing edge right here near the flap. And then come up to about, I don't know, 18 to 20 millimeters from the leading edge there. So they, they, they look a little more scale. Um, other than that, on this wing, actually, I, let me show you the other wing. I've already opened it up and then I have another little modification that I'm going to do there. Uh, one thing to note is the ailerons, the ailerons and the rudder uh, all come with pin hinges. They're pre-drilled, which is super nice because it is plywood. Um, the pre-drilled, I'll probably change these out for some Robart pin hinges. They, they seem like they're a little more robust. These are a little flimsy, but that's okay. It's a minor thing. Um, and then the the uh, flaps actually come with a flat style hinge that's pre-slotted on both the control surface and the, the wing. And they're probably about two to two and a half millimeters thick. So those are actually pretty robust compared to some of the flimsy um, other hinges, the other flat hinges that we're all used to seeing. So that's a cool feature. I, I would have liked to have seen them come in with uh, kind of what with what hangar 9 did with an angled entry point here for a pin hinge to be installed kind of at a 45 degree angle with both the control surface and the wing and have that flap come out i think that looks really cool and actually that's pushing more towards being a little more scale versus these but um thinking about it I almost, I almost contemplated doing that, um, but didn't want to mess with that. Didn't want to mess with putting a block in there and, and trying to get all that right because, partly because of the sheeted plywood, um, 
very, very awesome when it comes to finishing uh, or prepping to finish, but can be a pain in the butt when you're trying to repair or or do modifications like that. that that's where I favor balsa. Balsa is a little more forgiving when it comes to things like that. So anyhow, I thought those were pretty cool. So this, this wheel well has already been opened up here. Um, I'm not completely finished with it. I still got to clean up some stuff here, but um, it's open and you can see that the growing. Those are going to fit in there nicely. Now, the reason the reason I had resin on the other side of the other wing um, was because I laid down a piece of plywood, very thin ply that I had. I used a, a carpenter's trick where I laid down a piece of a painter's tape, put some CA on that, sprayed some accelerator on an opposite piece of tape, laid them face to face, sticky side down, sticky side up, basically made myself a double-sided tape there that was easily removable, laid my plywood over the top of it, uh, and then I took mono coat and I ironed that on really nice, went as far as even putting some, um, oh gosh, what's that stuff called? It's a release wax, uh, release all, or I don't know. Anyways, wax that, laid down my glass, and came up with some really nice sheets that match the contour, that'll match the contour of the wing. Um, so now that I have these enlarged openings, I can make my own gear doors. And I'm gonna go as far as making a three-piece door. I'll have the inner, the one that's actually attached to the unit, and then the one that's attached to the wing that will pivot and slide overla overlapping the, the second um, gear door cover when it is in the extended position. So again, Got some got some resin put out, crawled over the edge or whatever. But it's cool because when uh, I really enjoy working on the ARFs because I've got this coating on here and I can do and make it a mess and do all these different things to it. It's kind of like it's kind of like painting a room that you know you're going to change the carpets on on out on. Sit there and have a paint war with your wife and. That leads to other things, you know, so it's pretty cool. But you don't care because you're going to get rid of that shit anyway. So anyhow, that's open. The other uh, modification that I'm doing here is I've decided to put in a landing light. Now, I printed this up, um, designed and printed this up with my 3D printer. And I'm going to have a small servo that will operate it as well. It'll be tied into my gear channel on my radio. And then I'll have some sort of a limit switch somewhere down there. Um, so when this thing extends out, um, the limit switch will allow it to come on. And then, of course, when it retracts, vice versa, it'll shut it off. So just a little uh, modification that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Other than that, oh, oh, almost forgot. Don't know if you guys can see down in there. But they've mounted a servo mount right on the inside there. And um, you've probably guessed that that servo can drive or operate your inner gear door. Um, again, I think that's a feature that's really cool. Um, it, it's not something that's hard to do if it wasn't there. But the fact that it is there and I don't have to mess with it. And I know that I can operate my gear door and not have to come up with some ingenious way to do it is awesome so there's that and pull out here this is the aileron hatch so again it's actually uh, i don't know if this is ply it flexes really easy um but it is a harder wood it's not balsa and there's your servo mount i would have again i would have liked to seen it seen the mount actually in the wing um, I have had a couple models in the past where the mount was actually in the internal wing structure and, and it wasn't, uh, it just felt more solid. This here, I've seen it done before as well and it's worked out, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, not a big deal though. 
And the other thing I'm going to add on the wings is it didn't didn't come with any faux wingtip lights, um, but I'm actually going to cut those in and I'll mold some plastic to make some lenses, and then I'll actually run some LED navigational lights there, and that'll be a simple simple project. Other than that, that's pretty much it for the wing. Um, oh, I lied again. No cannons. The ARF did not come with cannons, nor is it pre-drilled for any cannons. So uh, more than likely, I'll be drilling those out and adding my own cannons there. But again, not a big deal. So now let's move on to the tail feathers and control surfaces for those units. This is the rudder. Um, this side has been glassed and this side hasn't. Um, but again, I'll keep saying it. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed. There was very little work, uh, very little work to do prepping for that glass. Another like really cool little feature. It's a small details, right? That really get me. They've added these thicker chunks of balsa down here. Um, now I don't know. Looks like maybe it was one sheet, but I don't, they they made they did some sort of magic. Anyhow, they attached it and they shaped it, and it just looks. It looks stellar. You know, you're not just going to have one flat, uniform control surface going all the way down um, to the bottom of the tail here. You're actually going to have a little bit of girth there that will uh, accentuate the, the rear end of the plane. So I like that. And to the rudder, I'll also be adding a, an LED nav light there, a recognition light. So they did a good job. I used a little bit of filler there in between the seam. And that's okay. I'll probably even come in after I do the glass and lay a little bit of body filler, depending on how the the filler primer sands off of that. So, anyways, well built. Uh, for those of you wondering, this is balsa all the way through. I don't think maybe besides maybe on the inside there's a little bit of uh, hardwood for the the pin hinges, but other than that, the rudder is balsa flap. Um, the flap is hardwood. The front end here is a chunk of balsa, but for the most part, looks like the ribs and the actual skins are hardwood. Um, not glassed, glassed. Um, the control arms, the control arms are actually cut out of a fiberglass sheet, and it's a dual. It's a dual control arm, and then a ball link goes in between the two. Uh, I'll get to those in, in the future videos when we start assembling everything together, or maybe the walk around. Look, guys, I'm not, this is like my second video ever. So if I seem a little bit all over the place, it's because I am. And um, we'll get to it. But in the meantime, if you do come up with any questions, if I've missed something that you're interested about or whatever, just go ahead and leave me a comment down at the bottom and... I'll be sure to answer those for you guys. So, again, um, ply built really well. Very little, very little prep work having to be done before the glassing. The aileron, same way. Um, it's not completely sheeted plywood. There, this tip out here, I'm imagining is solid and it's shaped. It feels solid, but it's solid balsa, and it's shaped to the uh, curvature that they needed there. Uh, well built. Again, can't complain. Pin hinges, four of them across there. And it's nice and rounded for the um, pivot point there. The horizontal stabilizer. Horizontal stabilizer also has that cool recessed feature in there, which is going to allow the control surface to fit in there nice and snug and play back and forth and have very little, if any, uh, hinge gap there, which I think is pretty cool. One little thing that kind of bothered me about two seconds, maybe is the P47 kind of tapers down right here across the control surface. This one just goes straight across and I'm pretty sure it was just to alleviate the challenge of having that recess there and making it all work. But, um, you know, as, as time goes on, I'm, I'm kind of digging this little to no gap and, um, and movement there versus the little diagonal line there. So anyhow, really, really well built. Not 
not sheeted with plywood here. This is balsa, balsa tip, like pretty standard. Um, but the the very tr the, the trailing edge of this thing is a harder plywood. And again, they built in that recess. It makes it look really good and really clean. These are removable if need be. It does come with a uh, wing tube here for the rear as well. And then two wing nuts will hold these in place. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have these just be glued in place. Uh, I, I don't ever think I'll be taking those off. But if I ever did, it would be on this model. Um, the horizontal stabilizers also house their own servos for the controls, obviously. So there wouldn't have to be any adjustment or unhooking of linkages. If I did want to remove this, all I'd have to do is reach in and the tail wheel, which there's plenty of room and just DC the, um, the servo, and then I could put those in the bag or whatever. So um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna glue them on, but if I don't, it, it'll be easy to remove and reinstall um, on fly days. Uh, one last thing I'm gonna show is the canopy. Um, I forgot to mention this in the first video when I was going over the fuse, I know I had the the hatch cover and kind of showed what uh, what cockpit it had um, but it didn't have the canopy on there so it's a really nice canopy it does need to be trimmed but the hatch cover also has contour lines where this will slip in uh, very nicely from what it looks like but uh, again just gonna have to trim those out a little bit no big deal um, standard canopy um, looks pretty good on the plane and, and we'll see that in, the, in future videos so for that viewer that was asking about that, here's this, the canopy, and I'll do my best to get some pictures up on social media for you with it attached to the hatch cover. So anyhow, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I hope that this was informative for any of those who are considering this model. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is uh, something new for me, and uh, I told myself I wanted to do this because of the lack of information with the CY models P4781 inch. So again, thank you, and we'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned for part three.